Gamification is really motivating for students, and I have a template to help you get started. You're going to go to alicekeeler.com slash badge game. And when you go to alicekeeler.com slash badge game, it's going to prompt you to make a copy of the template, and you want to let that spreadsheet load. Once the spreadsheet has copied, what you're going to notice is several things. It says you are level one with zero badges, and you have the difficulty level for different activities and tasks. Now here's what makes it a game, is there has to be choice. So whatever you want students to do, you have to make sure that there's more choices on there than they are required to do. And so you're gonna be able to assign a quest title, describe it, give it a badge, and if you'd like to, give some helpful links to give students tutorials or maybe they can turn it into Google Classroom or your LMS. And you'll see that I also have a column allowing students to provide evidence linked to their Google Docs or whatever it is that they have. And some of my students will even take screenshots and add those screenshots into the cell of the evidence boxes. So let's take a look along the bottom. We have the Markov tab. We have the badge display, and what that's going to do is give students a grid that when they earn a badge, be able to see a grid of all of their badges. And then we're going to go to additional resources, and this is where you can list out what the resources are that may be websites or helpful tutorials. This is optional. Maybe you want to delete that tab. You don't have to have it. Now this levels tab, what you're gonna be able to do is determine how many points they need to get from one level to the next level. So here's my hint. What is a basic, fun, quick thing they can do where they can immediately level up? So they do the activity and they level up. So I usually make that worth five XP. Let's talk about XP for a second. XP is not how many points the task is worth. What I do is I make the whole spreadsheet, the whole choice board, worth one grade, one set of points. So the XP is the game points, not class points. And so I have some of my XP is for fun things, like maybe doing something that they color or a word search they wouldn't normally use for an assignment, but it allows them to do something quick and fun as part of the overall game. And other things I do is challenges versus things that I just really want them to have to do. So I want something fun and quick that they can get started on and they level up immediately See that satisfaction that they went from level one to level two because success builds success. So you're going to want to decide here and you can change all of these points as I usually like to make sure that level two is set at the level that when they complete any task they are automatically level two and it incrementally gets slightly harder as they go through the game. There is a directions tab, this is for you. You're gonna be able to hide or delete that later. And then on this badges tab, this is where you'll see the list of the different badges. Now if you want, you can get rid of those. I have over here a badge library. So if you'd like to swap it out, so for example, maybe I would like to use this kid sitting or standing, whatever he's doing. What you actually want to copy is not the badge image, but the badge URL from the library and come over here on the left hand side and you simply, you can delete the link to the badge that's there and paste the link to the badge that you want. Let's come back to the Markov tab and see how that works. As students check off, you'll see that they not only level up and there's a progress bar, but they receive this badge with the badge display. And so as they complete more tasks, and hey, there's that one that I swapped out. And you can make this worth any number of points. You can see the total number of XP, that's game points. Game points are not points for the assignment. They're XP experience points for the activity. And you can decide how difficult it is these stars will automatically show up based on the difficulty level, and then you choose some sort of a quest title. So I usually start with creating this, is making a description, what I want them to do. And then after I make the description, I'm gonna do the title, something fun hopefully, and if I don't like that badge, I can again go to the badge tab say, okay, well, they're going to be coloring something. So I'm gonna use this pencil 
get the link, copy the link here, and replace in column B on the badge tab so that I can use that badge instead. So you're gonna create this list of choices. I start with the description, then I make a fun title, how much XP is it worth, and how difficult do I think it is, so that I can allow students to level up in this game, and you can see how close they are to getting to the next level. This does have some elements in it. You don't have to use any of the coding or add-ons, but I do have something in here for you called Game Designer. So when you go to Game Designer, I'm gonna choose Color Changer, and it's gonna prompt me to authorize the add-on. So continue, I'm gonna continue to the badge game. So after I've authorized it, come back to Game Designer, choose Color Changer again. It didn't do it before because it wasn't authorized. So now that I've authorized it, you'll see the Game Designer will choose random colors to help me make my game look differently each time I have students do one of the games. I would recommend that you rename this up here at the top, whatever you want to call your game, and then you would create these activities within the spreadsheet. Coming back up to Game Designer, you can create a slides tutorial. This is going to automate for you creating a Google Slides that you use as a tutorial for each of the different quests that you have. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose Create Slides Tutorials. Wait for it. All right, and then notice what happened is for each quest, it says click here. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose click here. It's gonna send me to those slides. Now notice that I have Oops, scroll down here. There are 62 slides. You don't have to use them all, but they're automatically hyperlinked back to the spreadsheet. So notice on here when I come down to this quest five, if I click here, it's gonna open me up to slide, whoop, actually opens you up to slide six because it has that intro one to get started. So whenever you click on, that was slide six, let me click on this one, let's see what slide that one opens up to. Slide four, so we can see it's off by a number because that was quest number three. As you add more activities, you're gonna be able to say that this is six and this one is quest seven if you'd like to do that. You can also put in the difficulty level and it'll automatically number it for you. So I can add more quests, more activities, and then for each quest, I wanna go to the slides tutorial, I click on it, and I build my directions or my activity. See, this says right here, directions for quest four. You can see it right up here at the top. Put my Bitmoji on it. Just drag my Bitmoji right on the slide. And then I can just add some text boxes, directions for the activity, whatever I'm gonna do. So that way, when students click on this link, it'll take them to the specific slide that has that tutorial on it. And I'm gonna put all my tutorials in the same Google slide, so that's super helpful. Let's go back up to the game designer and I can randomize the badges if I want. So if you don't like the badges on the list, you will see here that it's now randomized. I'm gonna do it again, I'm on the badges tab. Randomize the badges. Now, when randomizing it, you don't really have control, obviously, over which ones. I'm gonna randomize them again. And if you don't like them, you can easily swap them out. Here we go. So I come over here to the library. I decide I'd like to use 
this nice cat one, copy, come over here, delete, paste. I just replaced the badge link from the library over here in column B. Let's go back to the Markov page. Under Game Designer, you can create 10 badges. So if you wanted to create and design your own badges, you can choose Create 10 Badges. And you'll see that it's created a new tab here. So I have 10 copies created. I click OK, and you'll see that it has given me a list of these badges. So I'm going to go ahead and open this first Google Drawing, and it shows me here. Maybe I want to make this one Edge of the World badge. And if I add my Bitmoji on it, I'm going to just drag that right on there. You can also add clip art and word text and whatever you want to do to create the custom badge. But here is the key. You must do file and publish to the web. If you don't publish it to the web, the badge cannot be visible. So I'm going to publish that. And then back on the spreadsheet, I need to get this publish link and I need to add it to where I want it. So I'm gonna replace this badge with the badge I just made. You need to have the publish link on your badge list. And you can see my badge has shown up when I swap that out. Let's go back to the new badges. I'm gonna to go to the second one. I'm gonna click on that. This one I'm gonna change the color. I'm going to click on the edge of it, change it from yellow to blue. I'm going to insert some word art on this. Enter. You can change the font on word art. So I'll go ahead and do that. And I've got my badge. And don't forget, this is super important. You have to file and publish it to the web. Publishing it makes it into a badge. Just go ahead and click Publish, OK, and back on the spreadsheet, you're going to need to take this Publish URL and copy this to put on the badges, Replace, and Paste. Now, I did refresh to make this show up. It does take a little time for the publishing to catch up but I am able to get those on my spreadsheet over here. When they mark it off, those badges are gonna show up here in the badge column and also on the badge display. So you can create those 10 badges and you can go ahead and create 10 more. So I'm gonna click Create 10 Badges. I'm gonna come back over here to the New Badges tab and it's gonna extend and make more of these so that I can create and design my own badges. When it's done, go ahead and click OK. And you can see you can just keep going on this. Just remember to get that publish link onto the badges tab that you design and decide what badges you want for your activity. Coming back to the game designer, I have the option to create a student version. Before I create the student version, I'm going to clear the checks. So I like to check them just so I can test that the badge that shows up is the one that I want see how it looks, and when I've got all my choices and all my badges set up, I'm going to head and create a student version. Game designer, I cleared the checks. I'm going to create a student version. Now it does take a little bit of time. What it is doing is making a copy of that spreadsheet but only the key pieces that the students need to have. It is gonna make a reference back to the master sheet. So this is your master and you'll actually be able to update the master sheet and populate all of the students. So it's the student one that you wanna put into Google Classroom or your learning management system to make a copy per student. And then you can still make edits and changes back on the master so that if, I don't know about you, but I always have a typo, it updates for all of the kids. So you can see here that it says that I have the student version. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna add a new tab and paste. 
And here is the student version, and you'll notice that it says student game up in the corner, which is why I wanted to make sure that I named it before I did the student version. If you will notice when I click here that it says import range, that's because it's importing these values in from the master. So this is the one that I would control in here and I say, okay, well, I'm gonna put a description on this. And I'm gonna come back to the student version. Notice it now has added the description. You will see on the student version, it has the badge display and the additional resources tab that it's importing in from the master, but it doesn't have all of these additional tabs. So that helps you to change the levels, update the badges, or add additional resources, and those would be imported into the student edition. So you wanna make students the copy of the student version, and you are able to do it without doing it with the student version, that you can give them a copy of this one, but I recommend doing the student version because otherwise you have to know to hide all of these other tabs, which by the way, you can choose some of those options, right? It says hide sheets right here. So if you do hide sheets, you can see that it has taken those away. They're not gone, they're under view, under hidden sheets, and you can find those sheets there but if this is the one that you're gonna share with students, you do wanna hide those additional sheets, otherwise use the student version.